Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Astrological Intentions. I am your host, Alex Reedy, along with the Pisces princess herself, Sandy Reedy. It's Pisces time. We have a wonderful week ahead of us in the transits. We are going to go through February 27th, Tuesday, Mars square Jupiter. Jupiter holds the power. This is my astro interesting day. February 28th, Wednesday, Sun, Kazemi, Mercury. Another astro interesting day. And within 12 hours, we have received from spirit. And Mercury conjunct Saturn. And do something with it. And sun conjunct Saturn. And act on it. Put it into a real thing. Then Sandy's favorite day, February 29th, Thursday, Mercury sextile Jupiter. We need this extra day to imagine the possibilities. And March 1st, Friday, sun sextile Jupiter. Your birthday lead the way, Alex. March 3rd, Sunday, Venus square Uranus. The unworn path. Then in talisman times, Sandy has finished up two talismans and one final chance for the talisman of the month for February. And on the horizon, we have a Constellation Brace Workshop, the Eclipse Season Webinar, a show in Phoenix, Arizona, as well as two upcoming retreats. Then in our house, I have an astrology meditation for you all. It is Pisces season and a really wonderful time for dream state. So get ready for a sleeping guided meditation. Stay tuned for this episode of Astrological Intentions. I say go do you. Now travel far, share your stories and earn your scars. It's you. Say you are the one you will answer to when this life is done. Don't waste a minute. Jump in the river. Wash yourself clean so you can deliver. Hello, Pisces princess. I know it's back to, am I the queen and you're the princess? How about that? (laughs) Sure. Yes. We're both Pisces. Our our sun is in Pisces. Although that's the only planet you have in Pisces. I have Mercury in Pisces too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm so excited for Pisces season and anyone interested in a guided sleep meditation, stay to the end of the episode and I will share with you my newest astrology meditation. I also want to go direct to all of you listeners. Thank you so much for sending in your feedback, your comments. We really appreciate it and love it. And this is a call out for more. We would like to hear from you. Email me, alex at intentionbeats.com or head over to wherever you listen to this podcast and give us one of those reviews. Um, We would love to hear what you think. All right, so let's move into the transits and we start the week off astrologically on Tuesday, February 27th with Sandy's astro interesting day, Mars square Jupiter. So these are, um, you know, Mars comes around every two years and makes this square, um, actually makes a square a year um, to Jupiter. And this is at 10 degrees. Uh, the Mars is in, in Aquarius, making a square to Jupiter in Taurus. Um, but, but Jupiter holds the power here. Jupiter is in co-triplicity and he is in harmony with his tribe. So, um, you know, Jupiter has authority here over Mars. However, Mars is making a square to, to Jupiter in an overcoming aspect. So really here they're at an impasse. They, neither one of them, Mars wants to move, Jupiter wants to un, uh, understand and have more of a spiritual connection, a belief, and maybe why, why are we having to uh, move forward? So be aware of any rash movements. Uh, think about tomorrow, not just now, right? Not just mm-hmm. today, folks. Um, think about whatever um, action you take today ha- leads up to something down the road is more important than just getting something accomplished for immediate gratification. This is setting something up over a period of time. It's really interesting. I did a, I did the path. I went backwards and then I went forward um, because Mars, Mars comes to this Jupiter. um, He he was here making the square to Jupiter from Leo. Um, This was a, a separating a separating aspect square. This was May 22nd of 2023, 
when he was separating by, you know, kind of one degree. Then we have today. So mm -hmm. here we are in 2024. Um, and now, and our next one is until September of 2025, because we will experience this Mars going retrograde uh, in that period between now and September. It's actually in December and, and, and January of, of this year. Um, but he'll be making a, a square uh, Mars from Libra, making a square to Jupiter from, uh, well, Jupiter is in Cancer. So this that's not as nice of a placement. Uh, so here again, it's an astro interesting day. Jupiter is stronger here because Jupiter wants to have a purpose with whatever one is doing today on Tuesday the 27th. Okay, that was a ton of information, but I think I think we might have gotten it. <laughs> Just, Just as the last piece apart, right? Um, it's uh, have a purpose for what you're doing. Great. So continuing your astro interesting day, it's kind of blending into two days, is February 28th, Wednesday. We start the day with Sun Kazemi Mercury. Yeah. So we're this is this is a very interesting day. This all happens, these three aspects happen within 12 hours of each other. Well, actually 13. But the sun is making a con connection to Mercury, and actually Mercury is way faster than the sun right now. This is at nine degrees of Pisces. This happens at 2.43 a.m. We'll be asleep. So receive, and it's a superior uh, conjunction. Uh, it goes, you know, the, the Kazemi, Mercury, Kazemi, the sun goes uh, retrograde. Then the next time it's direct. Then the next time it's retrograde. Then the next time it's direct. It alternates. And when it's a superior versus an inferior, uh, superior is when it's direct. It receives things that's on the outer edge of the the sun, and it's gathering information from the cosmos. So it's about receiving a message from spirit. What can you clip in here? So before you go to bed, really on Tuesday night, um, ask your dream weavers to give you a message from from maybe what you don't understand, but it may be clearer as you walk through the day because mm. at nine o'clock in the morning, now you're up, you're walking, you're, you're up, you're doing, and Mercury is making a, an exact conjunction to Saturn at nine degrees of Pisces. So this is do something with it. So receive your message from spirit, from your night, your night dream weavers, get up at, uh, do something with it, right? Like take it, make it, make it real, you know, mm -hmm. the, pattern here is like, how can we form this? How can we establish something? Uh, this, it's some great ideation and, and inspiration, something that kind of formed in your head. Is it a, is it a storyline that you can actually uh, pull into the re real world? And then about six hours later after that, the sun comes up and makes a con conjunction in a Kazemi to Saturn because the sun's fa faster than Saturn. Also right. at 90 degrees of Pisces. So really, wow, um, these people that have, I should quick look, I should know this. It's a Mart, it's a, real quick, I want to look here. Uh, da, 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 da. So why don't you just talk for a second. Um, this is a birthday, whose ever birthday is this February 29th, which mm -hmm. is that leap, that leap, leap year. year. Right. Okay. Um, this is a very interesting that it's, that the sun is, in this leap year. So really you're at, you're at 10 to 11 degree um, Pisces. Pisces, but this mm -hmm. is a thing at nine. So this could come into you, Alex, this is within two degrees as it's applying towards. So it, it means it's moving, it's moving toward you and not separating. So, you know, that, that, that sun this is a good message. I, I like this message, receive from spirit, do something with it, act on it. And then that sun, yeah, the sun to the Saturn says, okay, the sun now is here going, okay, how can I make this work? How can I, how can I shine? How can I in, embody this um, and put it into a real thing? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, like you just said, boom, boom, boom. It's a whole sentence, right? Receive from spirit and do something with it, act on it and put it into a real, like a real promise or a real 
consideration. So, um, you know, if your birthday is February 28th, February 29th, March 1st, um, use this energy for real. Will will you promise? Absolutely. Let's go. (laughs) So the next day, February 29th, also leap year on Thursday is your favorite day. And that's Mercury sextile Jupiter. Yeah. And this is so perfect because uh, this, you know, we need this extra day to imagine all the possibilities that had come in the day before. So mm-hmm. react to yesterday. It's so good. It's my favorite day. It's like, is this an increase in finances? Is this about having like um, honest and purposeful wisdom? Um, it, it's It's... You know, we got Mercury in Pisces making a sextile to Jupiter, which with with reception, uh, because Jupiter rules Pisces. So mm-hmm. Mercury's looking o- is is over in Jupiter's house, right? In her sign, in his sign, going, "Hey, Jupiter, I'm at your house. Everything's working well. Um, <laughs> I need this extra day to imagine all of these things that I can do here in your house. You can imagine Jupiter's, you know, Mount Olympus, all the things that you can do there." It seems like it might be like a a high dream state or a like, yeah, like kind of like a visioning type of space, Mm -hmm. trying to get your head up into the clouds rather than too far down in the material realm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So March 1st, Friday, yay for Friday, yay for my birthday, sun sextile Jupiter. Right. This is with reception again. And we, and this is lead the way. Jupiter is such a wonderful guide. So be in flow here, be in flow. You know, I looked at your solar return time and uh, in Evanston, right, where you live, Mm -hmm. March 1st, Friday, it's at 3 10 a.m. 3 10 a.m. Those are my numbers. I know. Isn't that weird? 301 310. Um, right. And your your age moves from a 12th house into a first house, first house. annual perfection year. Wow. So, which then goes from having Mars as your time lord to what? Who's the ruler of your first house, your ascendant? Oh, your, this is going to be tough. I'm going to guess Venus because Venus yep. rules Taurus. Yep. Okay. You're, you're a Taurus rising. You move from Mars, Mars hands over the baton to Venus, and you're in a first house, so you're kind of beginning all over again. It's a brand new, fresh 12-year start. So if you you say you're tired or kind of like, oh, kind of being exhausted, this is a 12th house year that you're just completing is about, um, you know, rest, relaxation, kind of going into hiding, not so much, not so social. So, a lot of behind the scenes things have been yeah. going on in my world. Yes. Yeah. And now it's like, ta-da, you're on stage. You get to be seen. And it's <laughs> I'm really excited. Cool, right. And and that's so that's so nice. Yeah. 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 Well, I'll say that March 1st is my favorite day then. Since you get to call all your favorite days, I'll call March 1st my favorite day. Right. Um, so let's move on to March 3rd, Sunday, Venus Square Uranus. Yeah, the unworn path. If you can't find your route, create it. Life is before you, like new fallen snow. Be careful how you tread it, for each step will show. Right? That's a little bit more foreboding rather than like blaze your own trail. You know, that one's a little bit more fiery. The, the, um, the one you said is like a little bit like, you know, be very mindful of where you put your feet because it's going to, it's going to show where you go. Right. But, it's, it's more Venus. It's, there's no Mars here, right? This is mm-hmm. Venus and Uranus. It's like, you know, do something, you know, different yet with grace, with diplomacy, with, you know, with connections, making connections like, um, you know, this makes me think that, you know, go places that you would normally not go so that maybe one day somebody says, oh, you know, Alex Reavy. Oh, I know her. She was here one time. Like, like having like that mm-hmm. nice kind of spread of energy. If you, if right. you 
find the route. So in other words, mm-hmm. don't be lost. It's a square. So don't be lost here. You you can find your own way. Right. right. Don't have, and, and, it's I, not, and it's about not following others, right? Totally. And and forgetting the forgetting the idea that everything has rules. Because, you know, we'll say we're trying a new business endeavor and we think that like the industry is just the way it is and we have to follow suit because it just has its own rules, unspoken rules. But that's not always how it is. And actually, that's how a lot of businesses gain their success is by kind of breaking the rules and following an unworn path. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, again, Venus, yeah, Venus is um, is welcoming Uranus into Venus's house because Uranus has been in Taurus for four or five years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so whenever Venus gets to make a connection, even if it's a square, but it is Venus that she's benefic, um, making that square to Uranus saying, hey, there's still contact. Hey, I want to do something different. You want to help me? Mm-hmm. Well, I think this is going to be a really great week. I'm excited. You got your intro, astro interesting day and your favorite day in there. Yeah, and your favorite day. <laughs> <laughs> I got to throw mine in once a year. There we go. Um, so let's move into talisman times where you have finished up two talismans. Uh, the first, to create a loving and nurturing family. I provide a safe and joyful environment for my children, current and future, fostering their growth, curiosity, and well-being. We are family. This, I love it. This, this is just such a good, this is, this, this is great for pregnancy because mm-hmm. there's all four of these. This is a, what's called a grand trine. Well, no, it's not a grand trine. It's a minor trine, which are, is one trine and two sextiles. And it's, it holds the moon, Jupiter and Saturn um, in this area of the children uh fostering nurturing and pregnancy because all of these planets are in a uh, very fertile um mm-hmm. signs so right. this is great if you're looking for a pregnancy right and mooning cancer is like a very epitomized motherly um sign and planet so let's and move moon, on. Oh, wait, sorry. the moon, if you're going to mention that, the moon is in, in like you just said, in Cancer, ruling the fifth house. And in the fifth house, the fifth house is children. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there that's you go. Not, very great for pregnancies. This one will go fast, I think. So yeah, um, these pregnancy uh, sell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So... Same day, Monday, February 19th, is your second talisman to foster meaningful connections and build strong alliances. I contribute positively, uplift others, and collectively work towards a more compassionate and interconnected world. Mm. I really like this word interconnected because it's Jupiter in the 11th house of other people, of others, of groups, of the masses, of of, um, you know, common folk. And again, there's the Jupiter, or, um, the Jupiter is in Taurus. And it was, it's kind of a takeoff of what we, I did earlier in that morning on Monday, this is in the afternoon now when, um, there's a mutual reception with the moon and Jupiter. Yeah. Love this one. Love this one. Mm-hmm. In fact, yeah, I think they're both are- so helpful. This is the also the one that I chose to make the gratitude charms for the for the constellation bracelet workshop. So right. again, to foster meaningful connections and build strong social alliances. Mm-hmm. Um, this is why one when, when I use. So yeah. yeah. So the people that signed up for that will get this energy um, in one of the beads, the gratitude bead. Yeah. Right. And so the talisman of the month. But is this is the last opportunity for anyone to grab it before we um, announce next month's uh, talisman of the month next week to engage and agree with authority figures. I see you on an equal playing field. We admit we are each human and have concerns around this subject. 
we have the same opinion and work toward it in unison, we are linked up. Moon in Gemini trying Saturn in Aquarius. Yeah, and that's really like, the, one of the last ones I have with Saturn in its own in his own sign. That won't happen for another twenty six years. Right. It's I'll be one. able to get Saturn in 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 in, a, in his exaltation place of Libra, but still, that's not for another. Uh, um, 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 17 years. <laughs> oh, wow. Yikes. Okay. So let's yeah. move on to the horizon. Um, we are starting the Constellation Bracelet Workshop that's happening March 10th. Um, if you are interested, click on the link in the description. You'll be able to learn more about what this whole workshop is, which, as a quick mention, it is 12 Zoom calls, very intimate group size, where Sandy goes through each of the astrological tran transits for the reasons why she picked those days. During those meetings, Sandy goes through those transits, goes through that those transits within everyone's chart, maximum no more than eight people, but you get a very intimate connection, as well as Sandy wraps up the workshop with creating a talisman bead and yet you are a big part of that because you are the one setting the intention and the affirmation um in the end of the workshop you get a full bracelet that is totally linked up with all of these seemingly random times but that come together into a collective constellation for you to name honor and use as your talisman moving forward so we would love to have you join that um, again starts March 10th. And there's some um, astrologically chosen days in between then and March, May 1st, where you can join in and be a part of it all. Yeah, I'm, I've I've almost completed everyone's chart that signed up already, which is 12, 12 charts mm -hmm. uh, everybody will get. And that'll go out in a beautiful booklet that you're creating, Alex. And that'll go out probably in a, about a week's time because we got to get going on this. Yeah. So right. uh, this will be closed. So we'll close this opportunity soon because I'll I'll need a good um, week in advance of the start of this to prepare your booklet. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty right. thick booklet that's specifically only for you. Yes. So moving on to March 13th is um, the Chatting with the Stars Eclipse Season webinar. Sandy and Susan are going to come together explaining the eclipse season that is coming up. There is going to be a lunar eclipse and a solar eclipse in there. So those are going to be um, interesting to kind of dissect with two astrologers, Sandy and Susan. Um, go ahead and join our Patreon. You can get a free seven-day trial check out the webinar, check out the forecasts, all of the cheat sheets that you get complimentary with that subscription. Um, next, we have well, March. I'm going to add something oh. there. Yeah, because go ahead. That evening, Susan and I are open for readings. That is available right. for anyone to come in and we'll specifically talk about the, the solar eclipses and the lunar eclipses. That in are each person's chart. In the in right. that chart. So we are going to be open for, we didn't do this last year. Uh, we took a break from it, but we are entering back into it this year that always after our webinars, we are open. We're open for business for a couple hours. Right. <laughs> that's so that's open to everyone. Um, I'll uh, add the, I'll add the link in the description for right. everyone to click into. Um so March 23rd to the 25th, we have the Hay House I Can Do It show. It is, again, one of our all-time favorite shows. We would love for you to join in. We can see you, um, see you there, listen next to you as these amazing speakers and everything are doing their thing on stage and really inspiring everyone to live their best life. So we would love to see you there and click that link and check it out see if this is a good opportunity for you then we also have um our greece retreat that's happening september 22nd through the 29th um that is on amargos island which is 
absolutely breathtaking. The culture, the food, the people, the experiences, the content that both Sandy and Ariel Gutman are going to be going through each individual's chart is going to be life-changing and so memorable that yes I mean yeah. we're we're still we're still tra- talking on our whatsapps from the Greece retreat in 2023 it's so much fun the community we created was amazing and this year we're teaching the Venus star point mm-hmm. yeah a lot of people don't know theirs. Let's see how that five-pointed star interacts in your life. Yes. Um, and then October 9th through the 19th, we have the Egypt retreat. Um, there is so much ground to cover there. So I'm going to invite you to click through to check out the retreat page we have on the website to learn more about the itinerary, learn more about what the plan is. Sandy and Zephy, um are collab collaborating on this retreat to bring you to these amazing temples these once in a lifetime opportunities um it's going to be pretty cool yeah. Zephy does Zephy's for- actually there right now yeah <laughs> she's she's taking her first group because she goes about twice a year so mm-hmm. she's there now taking her first group for the year and then of course the second group will be in October with me yeah So exciting. So exciting. Um, Remember, if you are interested in joining for any retreats um, and you have a few questions, you can always book a retreat call with Sandy. It's just 15 minutes and where you can ask her whatever you'd like. Um, I'll include that link in the description as well. Um, So let's move into our house where I hope everyone is sleepy or getting sleepy and you need a little bit of rest. So Um, I have created an astrology meditation for you all for Pisces season since Pisces season is about the dream state, about um, really being kind of like buoyant within fluidity um, and what better way to do that rather than falling asleep in a peaceful way. (laughs) So um, without further ado, make sure that you're not driving, make sure you're in bed ready to go or at least on the couch um and without further ado here is the astrology meditation for pisces Uh. within each of us is the essence of pisces as it whispers calling us to surrender to the currents of empathy and imagination in a moment we will begin a sleep meditation to drift off into a peaceful dream state. To begin, find a pillow, blanket, and a quiet space. Lie down and get comfortable. Take this moment to get into position, or you can pause the episode here if you need more time. Let's begin. Start by taking a moment to get comfortable, lying on your back, your head resting on a pillow, your neck feeling supported. Now, take some deep cleansing breaths in and out. In and out. Continue this gentle, relaxed breath and see if you can let any tensions go with every exhale. Let your feet fall apart, your lower legs soften, your thighs relax, still breathing in 
and breathing out. Allow yourself to sink deep into your mattress, your back loose and heavy. Notice if you feel any tension in your shoulders, your neck, wherever you find it. And continue to let it go with every exhale. Imagine it leaving your body with your breath as it slowly drifts away. Feel your arms relax onto the surface they're supported by. Let your shoulders drop. Relax your jaw. Your head heavy as it sinks into your pillow. Breathing in and out. Everything here is peaceful. Except that feeling of calm and ease. Now begin to use your imagination to picture a relaxing nighttime scene. And if any distracting thoughts or worries come to mind, just let them go or float away. Imagine yourself standing on the shore of a calm, peaceful lake. Notice the water stretching out before you, shimmering in the soft moonlight. Slowly begin to walk towards the water's edge, feeling the soft sand beneath your feet, dipping your toes into the water and feeling its soothing touch against your skin. Begin wading further into the water and feel all tension and worry melt away, dissolving into the depths below. Surrender to the tranquility of the water as it surrounds you. You can float effortlessly on the surface, supported by the gentle currents below. Feel a sense of weightlessness wash over you as you let go of all thoughts, concerns, and allow yourself to be carried away on these peaceful waves. Know that you are surrounded by the loving energy of water and that it will always be here to nurture and replenish you. Allow yourself a deep sleep, knowing that you are held in the embrace. 
sweet dreams. And may you wake feeling refreshed and renewed. And I'll see you back here at Astrology Meditations soon. Well, thank you, everybody. That is a wrap on today's episode. Thank you for joining in. I'm trying to be as quiet as possible, just in case you're still sleeping. But remember, we are always here. We want to hear your feedback on the episode and sweet dreams. Bye.